Today's circumstances are in substance the same as Saturday's circumstances. My ruling is therefore that the motion will not be debated today as it would be repetitive and disorderly to do so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, kind, I, I, I rather imagine that if you didn't enjoy being bombarded, you wouldn't enjoy sit, so much sitting in that chair. And um, uh, I note the dilemmas you face mean that on occasion you will sometimes have to please some and not others. But it is becoming remarkable how often you please one lot and not the other lot. I would also. I would, I would also I would, also remark, I would also remark, Mr. Speaker, that you have um, inveighed against uh, most unusual things happening in this House which you did not like. And I would say it is most unusual for a Speaker so often to prevent the Government having debated the matters which the Government wished to put before the House. And it has also been one of your mantras, Mr. Speaker that the House should be permitted to express its view, even when it comes to changing the meaning of standing orders. And yet you have denied the opportunity of the House to express its view on this matter, because this motion, this, this motion was never voted on on Saturday. No. 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 Want the Honourable Gentleman to be heard, as he must be, fully and without fear or favour, and then I know he will allow me the courtesy of an uninterrupted response. Sir Bernard Jenkin. Well, because this motion was never voted upon, it ceased to exist, it ceased to exist as soon as it was amended, and I am, I confess, Mr Speaker, surprised that the reason for my right honourable friend's amendment, uh, my right honourable friend for South Dorset's amendment, uh, being tabled, uh, failed to enter your head because the reason was there was an anxiety that the law was not going to be complied with and the letter would not be sent. Uh, the purpose of the amendment, as has been said in several interventions and speeches, is to keep in place the insurance policy provided by the Benn Act, which prevents us from crashing out automatically if there is no deal in place by the 31st of October. So the circumstances have changed in that respect. And can I just alert the, you and the House, Mr Speaker, to the fact that my committee will be holding a hearing on the role of the Speaker. It has to be said somewhat, somewhat in the light of the experience of recent months. And that I hear what he says about his committee conducting an inquiry into the role of the Speaker. And that's absolutely proper. And I think he said something from a sedentary position about tomorrow. If that demands additional procedural creativity in order to come to pass, it is a racing certainty that this will happen and that neither the limitations of the existing rule book nor the ticking of the clock will stop it doing so.